Robinson. And I'm Kevin Cronin. Watch for us next on Radio 1990. Radio 1990 continues now with Lisa Robinson and her exclusive interview with Kevin Cronin of REO Speedway. What happens in the early days when you're out on the road and you start to build up a following and stuff starts happening and all of a sudden the band is something to be reckoned with? Do you go crazy with that whole kind of rock and roll trip, with the traveling, with backstage, with parties, with trashing hotel rooms, with all those kind of escapades that, well, REO Speedwagon in particular has been sort of labeled uh, madcap, yeah. crazy, silly things happen on the road? Well, we have a good time on the road. You know, we, uh, you know, um, when we come to town, I mean, to me, you know, part of what we're doing out there is we're. We're bringing a good time to, to whatever city we're going to, and when we're when we're on stage, we're, you know, hopefully the the fun that we're having is going to be contagious, and the people in the audience are going to, you know, get excited by the music, but also just by the, just by the f actual fun that we're having up there. And so, um, you know, for us, we like to we like to be having fun the whole time. You know, we like to from the time we leave Los Angeles, it's, I mean, it's kind of like when. Um, you know, when you're a teenager and your parents are, are leaving for the weekend, man, and they leave you the keys to the car and, you know, and, and then they take off and then you're in the, you got the house to yourself. Well, when we, when we get on the plane to leave Los Angeles, that's the feeling. When we get into a hotel, it's like we got the house to ourselves. Mom is and dad it are still gone. like that, though? Yeah. In, in that respect, it is. And the fact of, you know, the freedom and, and there's, you know, the only responsibility that we really have is to, to do a good show, but that's fun. And so we have a responsibility to make sure that we're, that we're having fun. And uh, you know you're away from home. You're in a different city every night. So any any ridiculous things that you do last night, you leave them behind. You go to the next town. You know. We were just talking about trying to stay healthy while you're on the road. And of course, you've probably been on the road more than most people, even yeah. in rock and roll. And are you doing this eat to win diet, or is it, I mean, is this a thing that the whole band is into? Or we, just... we we like to call it a nutritional program. You diet, rather than diet sounds yeah, good. okay. Yeah, we're all doing it. We're all. Doing our best to do it, you know. It's uh, what is it? It's um. <laughs> I don't know the book, so I don't know. It's, it's the Martina Navratilova. Yeah, it's, that one. yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, basically, we saw what happened to Martina Navratilova just from being kind of a, you know, high seed tennis player. And I mean, she looked okay, but now she looks great, man. Now she's just, you know, she's strong and healthy looking. So, you know, after years and years of being on the road and just uh, being crazed almost all the time. We um, this year we just decided to try something new. So what does that mean? Does that mean you don't drink, you don't indulge in any sort well, of excesses on the road? You exercise. Well, well excess what? is the is the trip, I guess. You know, we just try not to be excessive and and just and um, uh, yeah, get you know get some exercise. It, you know, our, our show is real athletic in general. I mean, just you know, there's a lot of energy expended out there if you're you know if you're gasping for breath in the middle of a rock and roll show, it doesn't look too good, you know. So this year, you know, we're we're you know just trying to stay in shape, tr stay strong, and feel good. And then then you go out on stage, and it's just an extension of it. And uh, you know, then th then I can jump around more and run around more. I mean, th this year in the on the sh in the show, there's one song I sing from the audience, and then run through the audience to get up on stage. Man, if I wasn't in good shape, they'd mangle me out there. Here's Kevin Cronin and friends with I Don't Wanna Know. Lisa Robinson will be back tomorrow with more of her conversation with REO's Kevin. Hi, I'm Lisa Robinson. And I'm Kevin Cronin. Watch for us next on Radio 1990. Radio 1990 continues now with Lisa Robinson and her exclusive interview with REO Speedwagon's Kevin Cronin. How long did that last, that kind of a struggle, really, for you? Three or four sleeping in one yeah. room of a crummy motel or something? It lasted, well, you know, when we were doing it, see, it didn't, it, it didn't really feel like a struggle. It was cool. I mean, it was, you know, that was the, that was the next step from, from playing in bars in, in, in our hometown where you just go, you know, play the bar and then everyone would scatter and go home every night. That was being on the road and that was great. I mean, that was you know, the band getting together and we, we had a truck with, uh, you know, we, uh, with, with our names stenciled on the back of the van and, you know, there we were. We had our, we could see our truck driving down the street. It was the REO Speedwagon truck and we had all our amps in the back and, 
and we were on the road. We had a road manager, <laughs> you know, and uh, big time. You know, yes. Oh yeah, it was big time. And if there was four of us sleep in, sleep in one room of a hotel, that was okay. It was all okay. You know, all that stuff. Even when you were back in the bars and playing in the bars when you started out, that was okay too. It was, it was great. But did you envision this? I mean, what was the furthest that you thought it would go? I mean, I just feel that every band that ever gets on stage has to, in some way, think that they're going to be as big as the Beatles in their head, otherwise sure. they don't do it. Yeah. So when you were doing the whole bar thing, and then you got into the little truck and went on the road, did you keep seeing things as a series of steps, or did you see the stadiums and the arenas and the number one albums? Well, see, when we were on stage in these bars, as far as we were concerned, it was Shea Stadium. You know what I mean? It, it didn't matter that it wasn't in our, in our, uh, you know, in our group, the five of us and, and whoever in, in our crew and everybody. To us, we were the biggest band there was, and we were, you know, if we were playing a bar, it was, that was it, man. That was that was hot, and you know, it, you know, you have fantasies in the back of your head and stuff, of course. But but as we were doing it, you know, we took it every step of the way, man, and every step that we went, that was, that was great, and we were just, um, you know, and, and it was always there was always some kind of. There was always movement. There was always a progression, you know. And you, you know, when we were, when we used to play the Red Lion in Champagne, that was that was the top bar in Champagne. And, and before we played there, we were looking to play that bar in the, the, the Red Lion. And then when we, when we got there, we accomplished that, you know, that goal. And then it was okay. Now, you know, now, you know, what's next? Now, what are we going to do? And, but we all, but in our minds, like I said, we were, we were, we were hot.